السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم. أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. إنما يؤمن بآياتنا الذين إذا ذكروا بها خر سجدا وسبح بحمد ربهم وهم لا يستكبرون. تتجافى جنوبهم عن المضاجع يدعون ربهم خوفا وطمعا ومما رزقناهم ينفقون صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله all praises to Allah سبحانه وتعالى the most gracious the most merciful the nourisher the cherisher the sustainer of these multi-dimensional universes. We seek his guidance, we seek his forgiveness, and to him we all return. And our sincere greetings and heartiest salutations to our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Alayhi Afdalu Salawati Wa Atammi Taslim And a very good morning to all of you and I thank all of you for coming and joining the session and especially I would like to thank the organizer of today's convention for organizing such an amazing convention and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept this event for his sake and to make it beneficial for all of us Amin Ya Rabbal Alameen Dear brothers and sisters, the topic I'm supposed to talk about today is prostration, divine formula to cope with challenges. And at the very beginning, let me explain to you what is prostration, what is the essence of prostration. So dear brothers and sisters, we all know prostration means sajda. There is a surah in the Quran al karim named after sajda, I mean surah to sajda, surah number 32. And this surah is the theme of today's convention, right? So, sajda, the word sajda, prostration, basically comes from the Arabic scale sajda yasjudu. It means khada'a, to make yourself submissive to anybody. The word sajda, Basically, it refers to present yourself or to lower yourself to somebody with full of solemnity and submission, with full of sincerity. In Arabic, we say, a sajda is wad'ul jabha, I mean the forehead, wad'ul jabha ala al ardi khudu'a wa tadarru'a. I mean, you put your forehead down, touching the ground, your hands are flat aside. Elbows are raised up and your knees and feet are touching the ground. This is sajda, right? You got the picture? When we offer sajda? So this is the visualization of sajda. This is called sajda. So sajda or prostration is the most iconic position in our daily prayer. Dear brothers and sisters, we all know we have four major position in our salah. If you see, we have standing, we have bowing, we have prostrating, and finally sitting. So prostrating or sajda is the most iconic position in uh, Muslim prayer. And except the salah, we can also offer prostration. Like we have three types of prostration beyond the salah. In our daily salah, we offer prostration, we, we perform sajda, and also outside the salah, we can also offer prostration. And there are three types of prostration. The number one is, we call it in Arabic, sajd to shukur, the prostration of gratefulness. When you get any very good news, you can offer sajda out of gratitude to Allah. And the second one, this is beyond Salah, outside of Salah, the prostration outside of Salah. So the second one is Sajdatul Tilawa, 
I mean, there are some specific verses in the Holy Quran. If you recite them, you're supposed to offer sajda. We call it sajda tut tilawa. And the last one, the sajda outside salah, it is sajda tu sahu. We call it sajda forgetfulness. If we make any mistake in our salah, so we are supposed to offer sajda. So these are the three types of sajda we can offer outside the salah, dear brothers and sisters. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He ordered for prostration in many verses in the Holy Quran. Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu urka'u wasjudu wa'budu rabbakum wa fa'alu al-khayra la'allakum tuflihun. I mean, O oh you believe, O oh you who have believed, bow down, prostrate yourself to me. I mean, perform sajda and worship your Lord, do good and you might be successful. So this is the verse number one. In another verse, in Surah Al-Hijr, Allah says, فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ So glorify the praises of your Lord and be amongst those who perform sajda. So I just mentioned here two verses from the Holy Quran. You will find so many verses in the Holy Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically ordered us, the true believers, to perform sajda to Him. And you also find so many hadiths mentioned in the books of hadith are talking about the virtue of sajda. I just mentioned here just one hadith. So the story was like that. One of the companions of the Prophet came to the Prophet and asked, O oh, the Messenger of Allah, tell me an act or about an act. If I do, Allah will admit me in Jannah. يدخلني الجنة. Then Prophet Islam replied him saying that عليك بكثرة سجود لله. You are supposed to offer more and more sajda. If you want to perform just an simple act and you want to enter paradise عليك بكثرة سجود لله. You are supposed to offer more and more sajda. And when you perform a sajda your rank will be updated. One sajda, one rank. And your sins will be removed. Allahu Akbar. Dear brothers and sisters, if we think, how many sajda we perform in a day? You have to feel it. By performing one sajda, my, my status is going up. In Zuhur prayer, we will perform so many sajda, right? By performing every single sajda, my status is going up. My rank is upgrading and my sins are being removed from me. Allahu Akbar. And you know the power of sajda, the fire of Jahannam, I mean the hell fire, cannot consume the forehead of those who perform sajda. Even once in his lifetime, I repeat, the fire of Jahannam, I mean the hell fire, cannot burn or consume the forehead of those who perform sajda even once in his lifetime. Allahu Akbar. Can we say together Allahu Akbar? And it's narrated in Sahih al-Bukhari that after the day of judgment, the people of paradise will enter the paradise and the people of hellfire will enter the hellfire. Then Allah will talk to the angels and Allah will say, Oh the angels, go to the hellfire and search there if you get somebody has a very dharra amount of iman in his heart. If you get someone, he has a very dharra, I mean tiny amount of iman in his heart, in his qalb, let him out from Jahannam. So the angels will start to search in Jahannam and luckily they, they will get one person he has a tiny amount of Iman in his heart, so they will make him out from the Jahannam. His entire body, it is mentioned in the Hadith, his entire body from up to down is burnt because of the fire of Jahannam. His entire body is burnt except the place of Sajda, Allahu Akbar. Except this place. So, just keep in your mind that the fire of Jahannam cannot consume your forehead, anybody's forehead who offers sajda 
even once in his lifetime, dear brothers and sisters. And sajda is the most ancient practice of worship, the most ancient practice of worship from the time of Adam, Adam alayhi salam, up until now, all the prophet of the Allah, all the messengers of Allah, they prostrated, they performed sajda during the time of their worship to Allah. And if you read Bible, also you'll get it. It's mentioned, chapter 17, verse 3, that Prophet Abraham, I mean Ibrahim alayhi salam, he falls into his face during his worship to Allah. Subhanallah bihamdi. And it is also mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 39, that Jesus Christ, I mean Isa alayhi salam also, he performed prostration during his worship to his Lord. Likewise, all the messengers, all the messengers from Adam alayhi salam up to the last messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they all, all the Anbiya alayhi salam, they performed sajda to Allah during their worship time. Not only that, everything on earth, everything in this universe performed sajda. Maybe we don't see. Maybe we don't witness. We, we don't have that powerful eyes. But it happens. Everything on earth performs sajda to Allah. And Allah says, وَلِلَّهِ يَسْجُدُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ Whatever in the heavens and on earth performs sajda to Allah. In another verse, Allah says, وَلِلَّهِ يَسْجُدُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ تَوَعًا وَكَرَهَا Whatever in heaven and whatever on earth perform sajda to Allah willingly or unwillingly تَوَعًا وَكَرَهَا Willingly or by compulsion. So in the first verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word man. It refers to the living creature. And in the second verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word ma which refers to the not living creature. What does it mean? It means everything on earth, everything on earth prostrates to Allah, from sajda to Allah. Yasjudu lillah. And the famous verse, maybe you all memorize from Surah Ar-Rahman, Allah says, Wan najimu, what is after that? Wan najimu, wa shajaru, yasjudan, Allahu Akbar. The stars in the sky and the trees on earth, yes, Judan, prostrates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it means whatever it is, living creature or the not living creature, lifeless objects, everything prostrates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Perform sajda, prostration. So I'm sharing with you the essence of prostration, the theme of today's convention, World Quran Hour Convention. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He praises those who prostrate in the Holy Quran. He praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can you answer me? Who praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You have to feel it, dear brothers and sisters. He praises those who prostrate to Him. Allah says, in Nama, I mean the verses, the two verses I started my lecture with today, verse number 15 and 16, I recited that, in Nama yu'minu bi ayatina alladheena idha dhukiru biha khurru sujjada. وَسَبَّحُوا بِحَمْدِ رَبِّهِمْ وَهُمْ لَا يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ تَتَجَافَ جُنُوبُهُمْ عَنِ الْمَضَاجِعِ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يَنْفِقُونَ Allah says, the true believers in my revelation are those who, when it's recited to them, they fall into sajda. And they glorify the praises of their Lord and they are not arrogant. They always keep their sights apart from the bed at midnight and call their Lord in fear and hope and they spend from where I have given them. So in these words, Allah is praising you, dear brothers and sisters. Those who perform sajda, Allah is praising here. Subhanallah bihamdi. And in a verse in Surah Al-Fat, Allah specially praises the Sahaba for performing sajda. And for your kind information, performing sajda was one of the major attributes of Sahaba Ridwanullah ta'ala alayhim ajma'in. When they get time, they used to make long sajda. 
And Allah says in Surah Al-Fatih, Muhammad Rasulullah, وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ أَشِدَّاءُ عَلَى الْكُفَّارُ رُحَمَاءُ بَيْنَهُمْ تَرَاهُمْ رُكَّعًا سُجَّدًا يَبْتَغُونَ فَضْلًا مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانًا سِيمَاهُمْ فِي وُجُوهِهِمْ مِنْ أَثَرِ السُّجُودِ Allah says, Muhammad is the messenger of God. And those who with Muhammad, I mean the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet, they are very severe against the disbeliever and compassionate to each other. And then Allah said, O Muhammad, tarahum rukkaan sujjada. O Muhammad, when you see them, you find them, they are bowing down. They are prostrating themselves to their Lord. And they are seeking the pleasure and satisfaction of their Lord. Seemahum fi wujuhihim min atharis sujood. The brightness are seen in their faces are from the mark of their sajda, from the trace of the sajda. If you perform salah five times in a day, if you make long sajda, usually you have a black mark here, the mark of sajda, right? You get my point, what I'm saying? If you perform salah regularly, and you perform tahajjud sometimes, and you spend long time in sajda, then usually you will get a black mark here. Allah is talking about this. Atharu sujood. The characteristics, the attributes of the Sahaba, most of the time, in their prayer time, they are in sajda, bowing down, prostrating to the Lord. And seemahum fi wujuhihim min atharis sujood. They have this physical mark. But few scholars, they have disputes like Mujahid, one of the greatest tabi, he states that this is not the physical mark. It refers to the khushu, humility. Anyway, in this verse, what do you find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specially praises the companions of the Prophet alayhi salam, the Sahaba. He praises us, those who offer sajda, and he specially praises in the Holy Quran the companions of the Sahaba because of their sajda, the prostration. And dear brothers and sisters, when we in the state of sajda, our forehead is down, down to the earth. In the time of sajda, we are at the closest position to Allah. Allah says, Kalla la tuti'ahu wasjud wa qtarib. O Muhammad, don't follow the instruction of Abu Jahl. Rather, you wasjud, perform sajda and waqtarib, be closer to me. So if you like to be closer to Allah, so do we like to be closer to Allah, dear brothers and sisters? The answer is yes or no? Yeah. We all like to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's our law, the master, the master of mankind. So if we would like to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are supposed to offer long sajda, dear brothers and sisters. Allah says, wasjud waqtari. Very short formula. Very precise formula. Wasjud waqtari. Prostrate. Far from sajda and be closer to me. Very simple formula. And a hadith narrated in Sahih al-Muslim, Prophet ﷺ said, "Aqrabu ma yakunu al-abdu min Rabbihi wa huwa sajid, faakthiru fihi dua." The nearest a servant can be to his Lord is in his position of sajda. So, in the time of sajda, we are at the nearest position to Allah. So, Prophet ﷺ said. فَأَكْثِرُوا فِيهِ الدُّعَاءِ Make as much as dua as you can. As much supplication as you can. Because you are at the very closest position to Allah. Try to use the time. Try to utilize the moment. So this closeness actually, you can ask me that I'm prostrating, so I don't feel that. How I become closer to Allah? Where is He? Dear brothers and sisters, it's all about the feeling. You have to feel it. When you perform sajda, you have to feel it. You are down to the earth. And you are, you are at the very closest position to Allah. When you are in sajda, whisper to Allah. Simply whisper to Allah. He's listening to you. Try to cry. He's watching the situation. He's watching the scenario of sajda. So the philosophy is here. I mean, when you are down to earth, your ranks is going up. Allahu Akbar. I mean, humility, humbleness. That's why Prophet said, it's very high time to make dua. 
So take it as a reminder when we are in sajda, especially in our salah of nafal and sunnah, we are supposed to uh, offer more sajda. MashaAllah, the audience are very energetic. And by the way, the breakfast was very nice. Nasilamak. Alhamdulillah. So dear brothers and sisters, coming to the point, sometimes we rush in sajda. We don't offer, offer the sajda in a proper way. But what we have to follow, we have to, we have to give more time in our sajda and to follow the proper system and manner of prostration. Because Prophet ﷺ said, Umirtu an a'buda ala sabaati a'ba. I have been ordered to perform sajda on seven bones. I repeat, Prophet ﷺ said, I have been ordered to perform sajda on seven bones. Your two hands, two bones. Your nose and forehead is considered one bone, so total three. Your two knees, total five. Two feet, total seven. So we are supposed to perform sajda on our seven bones. So we have to keep it in our mind. And finally, sajda elevates our rank and shows our humbleness. We cannot be more humble than the position of sajda, right? We are down to the earth. And the interesting thing is when we whisper to the ground and it is listened in the arsh, Allahu Akbar. And the most lowest position, we call it in Arabic, Al-Asfal. Can you repeat after me the word Asfal? Allah says, Inna al-munafiqeena fi darki al-asfali min al-nar. I mean the place of hypocrites will be at the lowest part. So when we in sajda, we are at the lowest part. I mean we are in Asfal. But what we recite in the time of sajda? Can you say? Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la, Allahu Akbar. So A'la, the word A'la is the literally opposite of Al-Asfal. We say, Glory be to Allah, my Lord, the Most High. So we are in the down position, but we are at the lowest in position, but we are saying He is the High, He is the High, He is the Highest. So Allah likes very much to see this scenario. We are in sajda, in the lowest position, but we are pronouncing and stating that He is the Highest. He is the Highest, He is the Highest, SubhanAllah. And you will find a lot of medical benefits. Due to the time constraint, I don't want to uh, discussed in detail here. Just one thing I want to share precisely that in sajda your brain position becomes lower than your heart. Your brain is lower than your heart so you get more bl blood supply. It will give you a very good effect on your memory, in your vision, in your hearing. That's why Professor Islam used to offer long sajda, very long. Ummul Mu'min and Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha says, Prophet Islam used to prolong his prostration up until that extent someone can recite 50 Quranic verses, 50 Quranic verses. Allahu Akbar. So can you, can you assume, I mean, the duration of one sajda of our Prophet, how many minutes? Can you assume please? 10 minutes? 15 minutes? Every single sajda of our Prophet Islam used to take 15 minutes. One sajda time, you can recite five zero Quranic verses. Allahu Akbar. And he also advised us to take relaxation. No rush, no rush in sajda. He said, Thumma usjud hatta tatma inna sajidan. He was teaching a sahabi how to pray. When he came to the area of sajda, he said, don't rush. Usjud hatta tatma inna sajidan. Get the relaxation, get the healing. And there will be the final trial of sajda in the day of judgment. Not only in dunya, there will be a final trial of sajda. Allah will order the entire human being prostrate right now. So we, alhamdulillah, we prayed five times in a day, we will be able to prostrate to Allah. Alhamdulillah, say alhamdulillah. That day inshallah we will be able to perform sajda in front of our Lord, but the people those who didn't offer sajda, their backbone will be very tight. Allah will make their spinal cord like an iron cord. They cannot even bend their backbone. They won't be capable. They will not be capable to perform sajda that day. Allah says, يَوْمَ يُكْشَفُ عَنْ سَاقٍ وَيُدَعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ فَلَا يَسْتَطِعُونَ That day the shin will be exposed. The shin will be exposed. Allah will call them to prostrate. Give sajda to me. 
they cannot do this so dear brothers and sisters let's prostrate to allah before we become unable to prostrate him and the final word finally and most importantly dear brothers and sisters sajda increases our attachment with our lord prostration sajda increases our relationship to our lord so do we need a good relationship with allah yes or no yeah we need it we need a very good relationship with allah so to overcome all the challenges we face from the very beginning i'm i'm hearing the word challenges 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 so to overcome all the challenges we face in our daily life of course we have to make a very good relationship and attachment with our lord allah and sajda is the solution it is the secret formula yeah this is the time to interact with allah private conversation with allah this is the high time to make dua so if you face any difficulties settle with your lord before you settle with the people you're facing problem in your academic career settle with your master the master of mankind then settle with your department of the university you're facing problem in your business career settle with allah first then you discuss in your business area you're facing problem in your family in your society settle with allah first then settle with people dear brothers and sisters because it's very high time to interact with allah try to use the potential try to use the opportunity try to interact with allah and the solution will come to you inshallah bismillah and with this i want to conclude my short talk thank you so very much for your time and patience jazakallahu khairan hadha ma indi wal ilm inda allah alayhi tawakkaltu wa ilayhi unib wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh